Hi, we're Shannon and Jerry Arner. And our dog, Betty White. Your hosts of the Arner Adventures podcast. Could we have named it something more creative? Probably. But it's the name of our blog. It's our last name. We're on an adventure. Yada, yada, yada. After running our own business, working 24-7. And don't forget a mental breakdown in between. We made a lifestyle change and decided to make the most out of life. We sold our house, most of our belongings, downsized, and moved to the coast. We live life minimally, but fully. We live each day as an adventure. This show will help you learn how to live life more fully, with more intention, by experiencing more, and with less stuff. We'll talk about our own experiences, interview others who have much to share by creating a spark in our lives. Some days we'll share real life ongoings of what we're going through and others will talk about our favorite flavor of waffle. Come join our adventure. It's It's the the Arner Adventures Adventures Podcast. Podcast. Hello everyone, I'm Shannon. And I'm Jerry. Betty White, our golden girl, is hanging here with us. And we're back for episode 85 of the Arner Adventures podcast. You guys, we have a spark in our lives episode today. And we are elated to share this combo with you because we are big fans of this person. But first, let's get to our review of the week. Our review this week comes from Rodney at 98. The Arner Adventures podcast is the perfect balance between minimalism and flexibility. With practical tips and a welcoming approach, Shannon and Jerry empower listeners to design the life they want. Inspiring. Well. Well, Rodney (laughs) at 98. That is really, really nice. That is so nice. nice. And, you know, we we love that you are... uh, Picking up what we're putting down, as the kids say. <laughs> <laughs> Are they still saying that? No. Oh. No. That's that was like the <laughs> 70s or the 80s, I think. Well, they're, it's probably coming back around. So you're putting out what you're, how was that? Picking up what we're putting down. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you, Rodney. Thank like you so said. much, everybody, for yeah. even taking a moment to give us a five-star reviewer rating. It It means so much to us. You are a spark in our lives for doing it. And it helps to serve us up to other people who may be interested in content like ours. So please, if you're listening to this, take a sweet moment. We'll wait and go and give us a five-star review or rating in the podcast platform you're listening to us on. Talk about inspiring. We can't wait to tell you who we got today. Our guest today is Dan Whalen. Dan is a cookbook author of our favorite cookbooks. I mean, our our favorite cookbooks. And we have a whole story about how we got introduced to Dan, not even real, because to, our podcast is the first time we were actually introduced to him. But how Dan Whalen came into our world, we have a whole story about it. You are going to be just drooling by the end of this episode because of the food content. I mean, his cookbooks, like The Tots, and the nachos and all of it. His cookbooks are amazing and they're a big part of our life. And we can't wait for you to hear this conversation. His cookbooks will be your favorite as well when we're done with this episode. So (laughs) are we ready to get to the convo? Yep, let's get to it. Our guest today is someone we have admired and been a fan of for a few years, and his work is definitely a spark in our lives. Our guest is Dan Whalen. Dan is a cookbook author and blogger at The Food in My Beard. He's been blogging for over 15 years and has created thousands of recipes. He's known for comfort food mashups and has written books about nachos, tater tots, our favorite, s'mores, all kinds of comfort food. He's appeared on Guy's Grocery Games, Rachel Ray, The Today Show, and CBS Sunday Morning, which is how we found him. That's how we found. Most of his time as a blogger has been in Boston, but he's also lived in Bermuda, Columbus, Ohio, and is currently in Atlanta with his wife, Georgina, and dog, Frida. Dan, thank you for being here. Thank you both for having me. This is this is great. And that was a, a perfect little rundown. <laughs> so thank yeah. You. First of all, I got to know about Frida. Is Frida after Frida Kahlo? Yeah, many different inspirations uh, okay. behind the name. But yeah, um, it was that's definitely one of the main ones. But okay, we, we, we love we that. picked her up. Um, she's a rescue and mm-hmm. we got her when she was only, you know, like two months or so, six uh-huh. weeks. Um, we didn't name her. Her they had called her Sassafras, and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you know she's so young it didn't really matter. And we went through a few different names. And once we had her for one night before we had decided. And once we said Frida, we we're like, that's it. That's oh, we're keeping it. 
We love that. Well, yeah. we, we adopted Betty White and her name was Blossom, which was just terrible. Um, but then we, of course, she's white and she's a pity and, you know, they have such a bad reputation. So we thought, well, if you name her Betty White, everybody will love her. So, yeah, we love we love good dog names. And Frida's definitely a good dog name. Uh, back in 2017, we had this major shift in our lifestyle. We sold all of our stuff, our house and stuff, and we went tiny. So in our tiny home, we had the only way we were really cooking was like a stovetop thing and a toaster oven. And one day we didn't, we didn't have, we still don't have cable, but we were able to watch the CBS Sunday morning thing through some kind of streaming thing. So mm -hmm. we're one Sunday morning and you're on CBS Sunday morning. And I, I'm pretty sure it was the Tots book. I think that was what, what got Yeah, that, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so the Tots, mm -hmm. you, they come on, they do this whole interview with you. And at the end, at the end of it, Jerry and I had also been like, we're not going to buy things for a while. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we bought the book and it came and we did, I mean, we've probably cooked everything in this Tots book, but wow. we did all of it in our toaster oven. We oh, still, that's it's kind of like a even though we've we have more space, we have a regular oven now, we still do a lot of cooking in our toaster oven. But all of the things that we do out of your cookbooks, we still use our toaster oven because we feel like it kind of has a, <laughs> a oh, that's so nice. I love that. Get ready for a summer hydration upgrade. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV, a true game changer in our daily routine. We've been relying on Liquid IV for years now. Let me tell you, it's been a total game changer, especially when it comes to staying properly hydrated. Liquid IV is a hydration multiplier conveniently packed as a powder in individual packets. And the best part? It comes in a variety of delicious flavors. Personally, I can't get enough of the pina colada and strawberry sometimes mixed together. Yum. They make the perfect summer mocktails. Whether you're on the go or prefer to make a big pitcher of water for the day with a few packets like I do, Liquid IV has got you covered. The magic of Liquid IV lies in its ability to deliver two to two and a half times more hydration than plain water alone. It's like water that works for you. Ready to experience the hydration revolution? Head over to ArnerVentures.com slash Liquid IV to grab our exclusive discount code and enjoy free shipping. That's ArnerVentures.com slash Liquid Dash IV for your ticket to staying refreshed and properly hydrated this summer. And now let's get back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Jerry, of course, is a big Tots fan. We love Tots, but that got us in to, to all things Dan Whalen. And so we have all your books now, and we're so excited that you're here to talk about it. Yeah. And we, but the Tots book is always the go-to, I think. <laughs> I, yeah, I referenced that. I mean, just the, the perfect shape and yes! the, like, the feeling of the cover. When I saw it, like yeah. they had told me that's what they were going to do. And I was like, okay, okay. I, I don't really get it. I actually was on site for the photo shoot one day, but they shot for five or six days. And actually when I was there, I was like, I need to leave because they had a whole thing going on that, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that was above what, what I normally do, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. But so I had an idea of the photos. I'm like, these are really cool. It's like old school dinery almost and like a really cool vibe. But I, I did not understand what they were going to talk, what they were talking about. We're cutting it out. We're making it like, tactile and when it came to me for the first time i was like oh my god this this is amazing it looks so good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the picture just invites you right into the book mm -hmm. it's um yeah and it's got the the the, the edges that are that are yeah um, all cut out and all yeah cut like out. a tot like a like a yeah. tater tot you feel like pile, you're going to yeah. play the tots yeah. and and when you realize you're not you realize well i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make something out of this and <laughs> when we started our blog, we started blogging about cooking in our tiny home. And so we started doing some of your recipes. We don't eat meat. So we substitute your meat stuff for like, you know, the beyond impossible burger, sausage, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So we always still use uh, your whatever you say about meat. We do it, but we just do it in a faux meat way. And I mean, I don't know what it tastes like with the meat, but with, with what we do, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, with the, yeah. we're going to get some questions in a minute because everybody's probably like drooling right now. But <laughs> my favorite is the, I mean, I do love the tots, but my favorite is the nachos for dinner. And oh, oh my yeah. God. I mean, it's like every Friday we're like, all right, let's do a nachos for dinner. And they're all good. They're all so good. Yeah, it's a very similar idea to tots. It's like make a pile of chips and like put stuff on it. Right. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. also, to be honest, like we do a lot of, of uh, meat alternatives here, you know, oh, even okay. though you wouldn't think 
think that from what I post on <laughs> my website. Those are like, <laughs> but when we're, you know, what I'm trying to like balance that in other ways. And uh, when we're eating our usual dinners, it's, um, it's something different usually. With all of the recipe creations you do and the sort of comfort food um, feel around it, I mean, how, I'm, I'm looking at you and you look pretty healthy. How are you not like 500 pounds? I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, that's a common question I get. And it's definitely a combination of balance. Like I mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, when I'm not blogging, i um, trying to eat healthy in the morning. I, I also work out a lot. Okay. Uh, so I try to do like a half hour a day and that's like six days a week combined with walking Frida. And then also, <laughs> I mean, I have to be honest, like metabolism is of course part of it. And I'm lucky enough to, uh, to have a good metabolism as well. You are very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Especially me. It just worked out with this line of work, probably. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Everybody sort of has a journey of how they started a blog. So were you, and I know you lived in Bermuda for a little bit. I want to know about how you got to Bermuda. Um, how did that happen? When did you start your blog and what made you just decide you were going to do this and, and recipe creation and all of that? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I went to school for computer science, actually, and I grew up about an hour and a half outside of Boston. My whole life, I'm like, I'm going to move to Boston, like work and be like a guy in business, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, com and computers, like, you know, that was kind of like it for me. So I went to school near Boston, graduated, and I worked for like six months. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the rest of my life. Like, it, it took only six months for me to start having these feelings. And luckily enough, my my school had classes in Bermuda because it's a hub of international accounting. Oh. So a few people that I knew and my friends and stuff were going to Bermuda um, for, for these classes. And they're like, oh, it's really easy to get a job here. So I went, got a job there. And the thankfully, a few things. First of all, it was probably like my dream job in computers. It was oh. something that I probably could have never gotten in 15 years working in the United States. So that was cool. But also because the Bermuda lifestyle is a little different, I was able to spend some free time uh, doing my own hobbies. I was cooking a ton and I was building a website on my own as a way to just practice the type of things that I wanted to do in computers. My friend was like, you should combine these two things because I was just putting whatever onto the website. And they were like, you should start playing the recipes and call it the food of my beard. And I bought the domain <laughs> name that day, started putting some of my recipes up there. And I was really only trying to remember uh, the, the recipes that I was making so that if I had friends over, I could reference my own sort of memories of it. Oh. And then, you know, the feeling, some mm -hmm. people start to like it. It takes off a little bit. This yeah. was before Facebook really even. So it was like news feeds and stuff like that, where I was yeah. getting a little traction on the website. It was 15 years ago. So I was getting all excited, kept going, kept it up. And uh, probably about six years later um, in Boston, I was able to quit my, my sort of day job and start focusing on that full time. That is amazing. That's a great story. I thought you were going <laughs> to say something like, well, when I was in college or whatever, I, I worked in restaurants and you know, you were kind of all about that sort of lifestyle, but no, that this is yeah. even better. <laughs> no, I mean, I did some restaurant work. I worked at coffee shops and, um, and then in, when I was transitioning from like working full-time in computers to working full-time on my blog, I also worked at a burrito shop for about three years, okay. uh, which was an interesting experience. I helped them open and I created all the recipes for them. So that was where I kind of really Oh, dug in a little deeper a burrito book oh, would be really good you should gonna, do that i'm gonna say that falls right in line with nachos and hot <laughs> it so you does. just sort of throw on the burrito whatever you want to <laughs> yeah well there is actually a page in the nacho cookbook that says like by the way all these are basically from my burrito oh, shop and yeah you can uh -huh. you can kind of like use this guide and like all the different recipes to have a fun burrito night Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you do you. that? I didn't know uh -huh. that. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that that's interesting. So you, the, the Tots book was the first one, right? Uh, there's actually one more called Stuffed. That was my first cookbook. So Stuffed was all, the first one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's all one thing stuffed inside of another thing. Okay. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> okay. I had a lot of fun working on that one, writing that book, but being a first book and kind of like, it was an interesting time of publishing where 
a lot of publishers were sort of leaning on new bloggers to kind mm -hmm. of like get content out there. So, um, oh, gotcha. you know, I'm, I'm proud of it and it, it's fun to, to look through, but yeah. um, Tots was my first in a more sort of modern era mm -hmm. with a really, really amazing publishing company. Well, uh, they, they, maybe their PR, um, uh, group or something, or their marketing did a really good job because that's how we found you on CBS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, when you're at home and you talked a little bit about your cooking at home and are, do you just kind of, I envision it this way, right? I envision that you wake up <laughs> in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, I could put that together. I could put this on this or whatever. I mean, how, how do the recipes come to mind? I know that we've seen some of your videos where you just kind of, you end up throwing some things together that you have. Is that how most of it works? Yeah, it, it's a lot of times. I, it is funny because I do wake up in the middle of the night and jot some stuff on my phone for sure. Uh, okay. Get ready to set the perfect summer ambiance with Southern Oak Artisan, our trusted sponsor for this episode. Southern Oak Artisan specializes in crafting 100% natural soy candles that not only enhance the aesthetics of your space, but also prioritize your health. These candles are made with non-toxic ingredients, ensuring a safe and enjoyable breathing experience. So say goodbye to overpowering scents. With an array of delightful summer options like Lime But No Salt and their new Mayberry Scandal that is strawberry guava scented. OMG, you're going to be spoiled for choice when it comes to selecting your favorite scent. What's even better is that Southern Oak Artisan's 100% natural soy candles are handmade right here in our home state of North Carolina. But don't worry. If you're not local, they ship all across the United States. Ready to bring the captivating sense of Southern Oak Artisan into your home this summer? Head over to arneradventures.com slash Southern Oak Artisan, where you can grab our exclusive discount code and link to save on your soy candle purchase. That's arneradventures.com slash Southern Oak Artisan. Make sure to check the show notes for easy access. It's time to elevate your space with the essence of summer. And now let's dive back into the show. Bye. It is just like, it's usually I'm eating and I go, oh, wow, this like has a lot of similarities to this other thing. So it'd be cool to put them together in a unique way. So then I have to say, okay, like, is this, if I'm making a burger taco, is this going to be a burger that's like taco in flavored or is it going to be a taco that's burger flavored uh -huh. or is it going to be somewhere like in the middle and what ingredients can I like pull from each different category to... Mm -hmm make this sort of like a true com combination of the, the different things. There it sounds is, like a lot of fun. It just, totally does. <laughs> yeah. There's there's yeah. a recipe and I can't remember which one it is now. We've done it several times. It's I think it's like a burger nachos one because it has ketchup and mustard mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. 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 Not bur so yeah. So same thing. Like yeah. nachos a lot of times have ground meat on it. Burger, ground meat. Like, uh -huh. so like how can I translate these burger ingredients to I try to like replace. So if you're thinking about it, you're like, oh, pico de gallo is on nachos a lot of times. Yeah. Well, tomatoes are on burgers a lot of times. So an onion is also in pico. And then mm -hmm. jalapenos. But what if I put like lettuce and pickles into the pico? So then it suddenly like has more of a burger vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, it's so good. It's so good. I'm, I'm so excited about all of this. I also want to make sure I mean, we, your books are amazing and everybody should go get them. I, but I want to talk about uh, your blog too, because we actually saw this week and I, I don't know how long it's been there, but I know that I just saw it this week is the Noki pasta salad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's brand so, new. It is brand new. Okay. So yeah. we, we looked at it, I think a couple of nights ago and I was like, Oh my, I mean, Sometimes I can look at stuff and go, yeah, that looks really good. And sometimes you look at things and you just feel like I have to do this right now. <laughs> so for that, is that another one of those? Because I was like, Noki, is that like he's in an Italian sort of mindset? And then you're, you talked about different kinds of pasta salad around the U.S. that you could substitute the stuff out. So it, something like that, that's completely, I, I don't know. It's just completely something I would have never thought about. It, how did, like, if you can use that as an example, and tell us how that there's one been, came to be. Yeah, there's been a lot of times where I think I'm tr taking gnocchi and I'm thinking like, okay, it's potato and flour. So what, similar to the tater top book, I'm like, what are, so what are potato recipes that I can use and swap out gnocchi for the actual potatoes? Okay. I've done this probably like eight or nine different times on my blog over the years. And I was actually surprised that I hadn't done it with potato salad, to be honest. Mm. So... I, um, 
I was sitting there thinking like, what can I do with pasta salad? And then I thought of gnocchi and I was like, okay, let me do a cool pasta salad with it. And then I was like, wait, it's mostly potatoes. And then I went back in time almost to when I was doing that more with gnocchi, like loaded gnocchi or gnocchi gobi was a fun one that I did a long time ago. And I'm actually going to revisit soon. Okay. And I, I thought of those times and I was like, okay, no, instead of trying to make a cool pasta salad with the gnocchi, I should be focusing on making potato salad with the gnocchi instead. Oh um. man. <laughs> well, we're going to, we, it's on our list to get the stuff for this weekend. We're going to try to make it this weekend and see how we do. I mean, I feel like we probably can't mess it up, but I think it'll be good no matter what we do to it. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, think a, you know. And I think a lot of my recipes, I try, I encourage people to like do it your way because when you're talking about comfort food, it's really about what, what you think of. I don't think there's a real thing of comfort food. I think it's like what makes you happy. Mm. And I think like uh, for me, like my, one of my biggest comfort food is ordering Thai noodles mm. and ordering them, not making them or anything like that. Sitting on the couch, ordering it, watching a movie or TV show and like opening the container and eating it right out of there. And that's like the biggest comfort food to me. So yeah, when there's a recipe like this potato salad, you have to make it like thinking about the potato salad you like, not just the potato salad I like, uh -huh. and then turn it into your own comfort food. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I know. I feel like the books really do emphasize that a lot too. The, the do it your, your way kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Like the, I mean, it's yeah. also a way for me to cover myself and be like, don't just <laughs> follow my, <laughs> case you mess it up. And it's like, now it's on you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. You're providing a template. <laughs> and from then from there, it's all up to you. <laughs> yeah. There is a, um, there's a recipe and I can't pronounce it. It's the, we've done it a few times. The tot, um, oh, oh gosh, I what? think I was looking at it last <laughs> night. Um, yeah. Tot yeah. Shakshuk, shakshuka. Shakshuka. Oh yeah. 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 I it's, love um, that one. Yeah. It's like a middle Eastern baked egg dish. So yeah. like you mm -hmm. all crack the eggs right in there and let them yes. cook in the <laughs> tomato sauce. Yeah. But it's I mean, one that favorites. one, I really just like added tater tots. On the top. <laughs> okay. Well, we we did it where um it was yeah because we said made meatless. You must put meat in it. Did I see that? There I mean, maybe like just made it. Sausage okay. Well, anyway, we we made it and we put it um on our blog and said, okay, we have this book from Dan Whalen mm -hmm. and we're gonna try to do this. It was mm -hmm. so popular and people were like, <laughs> oh, oh, I've had that, but whatever. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, I so my whole point is here, you're also educating us in the food oh. world because <laughs> <laughs> we Love had never that. heard that of mm -hmm. that Middle Eastern uh, dish before. But now Jer is an expert at our way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> So we, I guess another question of mine, you were talking about um, at home and all of that. Do, what does your wife think of your food and your cookbooks? Uh, well, she loves it, first of all. But also, like, as you know, the food on my blog and everything is aggressive. Yeah. And compared to, like, what we normally eat for, yeah. for dinner, right? So yeah. a lot of times she'll, like, if I'm cooking during the day and she's working, you know, and it's like a little much to pop in at 11 a.m. and be like, hey, here's a bacon wrapped hot dog wrapped in a taco or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've learned to like balance that. But also, uh, like you both, we both are very online people mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, we work both work in the industry. So we also yeah. try to balance that sort of work life and um, yeah. public blog life and dink life as you were talking about last week um but i did listen and correct me if i'm wrong you didn't mention one of my favorite ways that people have said that recently is dink wad <laughs> so my mom with texted dog. me with that yes my mom <laughs> i didn't tell you that jared my uh -huh. mom let she you know she's our biggest supporter so after it she sent me and said you two are <laughs> you two are dink wads and i go what? And I said, Oh, you're funny or something like that. And she was like, no, you are Dinkwad dinks with a dog. And I go, is that a thing? <laughs> so, I only heard it a few weeks ago, but yeah. Okay. Same. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would love it because we do talk about this a lot on our podcast. It's just our journey sort of started with, um, 
us just just being completely burned out. And that's how we made our lifestyle change. And again, we talked about in our show about being dinks that one of the disadvantages is you don't have um, a child who can take your attention away from work. So with the work you do, especially being in the kitchen and all of that, and if you're both online and how, how do you set those boundaries? How, what are ways that you protect that from, from not getting burned out from it? Yeah. I mean, it, it ebbs and flows, right? Um, I mean, right now I'm like, I'm having the best time posting. And a few, like a year or two ago, I was like weird about it. Also, I'm like naturally introverted uh -huh. and I had fought against that my whole life kind of, um, and really put myself out there and pushed myself through college and, and afterwards and being a public persona. Right. Yeah. Um, but in, I would say the pandemic like brought a lot of those feelings back for me in a big way. Mm -hmm. So it, you do really have to balance. And I would say pre pandemic, we would have trouble and we would always be like taking videos of our food when we go out to eat and stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> since, since then we yeah. have, um, we haven't really had much trouble. We both have dialed back probably almost too much. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm really trying to like put myself out there a little more again and, and be posting more in stories and wherever else you, you have to post these days all yeah. the time, you know? Yeah. Um, but I am, I have been really enjoying just like working on my recipes and sharing them because the way social media is set up right now, which we all know it changes every six months or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the way it's set up right now is helpful for me because I create things that are often like viral type content mm -hmm. that you want to send to your friend. And so I was having trouble getting out there a few years ago because like the social media wasn't really set up that way as much. Yeah. And yeah. now it is. So um, I'm having a lot of fun because a lot of people are seeing seeing my stuff again. Um, so that's yeah. been, been great. It's interesting to hear you say that because so many people complain about the, and you're going to complain either way, right? People are going to complain. Right, but yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people complain, oh, my stuff's not getting out the there. Algorithm, Nobody, yeah, yeah. The algorithm, yeah. Um, so to hear you have a positive spin, we, we have a positive spin of social media and that we feel like during COVID, it sort of helped keep us um, I don't know, more social. And it really bothered mm -hmm. us to not. So I think it it really helped us um, to stay connected to people where I, I think otherwise it would have been really detrimental for us to not yeah. have any connection yeah. to anybody. I know as a blogger what goes into blogs and I can't even imagine then also now pulling in content of where you have developed recipes to also pull in there. And I know you've been, um, you've had kudos from, you know, Rachel Ray and Gaffietti. And I'm just curious, are you um, fully accepted in the food and culinary world? Or are there some people who are like, oh, you just, you know, whatever, this taught book, which, you know, we're not like. <laughs> no, no I get it. it. I get it. Yeah, I'm just yeah. curious if that happens <laughs> to you. Because you get haters and trolls everywhere. But I'm just curious in your, curious in your world how that goes by. Yeah, I feel like when I was starting out, you know, it was a lot of hate, sort of like weird misplaced hatred towards bloggers. And mm -hmm. even more than that, uh, I have always done mashup cooking. And so like, whatever you call it, fusion, mashup, yeah. whatever, like people were, were, were hating on that so bad, like 10 years ago or something. And now everyone, it's like what all everyone is doing. Yeah. The most recent viral thing was like this smash burger taco that like is now on rep. That guy made that, um, three months ago and now it's like on restaurant menus and and stuff it wow. went so far wow so um it's interesting it's definitely interesting the change um and i think bloggers yeah are fully accepted in in the whole food world for sure yeah okay good i mean trust me i get that i like to share some of the crazy comments i get i get every day you know yeah. i feel like anytime especially i mentioned like things that go viral like Anytime people are seeing it that are outside of the window of like, they know what I do, mm -hmm. then their first instinct is to be like, you're an idiot. What is this? You know, like, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I could tell a million, million <laughs> examples, yeah. but I recently followed that there's like a new trend where you chop everything in a sandwich. Oh. Um, and so I did my spin on like a chicken parm in that way. And that's oh. the other thing. I don't usually follow trends. Um, I try to like make the trends, but mm -hmm. what is popular right now is following the trends. 
So I could do 10 videos of a, an original recipe and get a certain lower number of views. And then I do one of the trend ones and it gets high views and all the comments are, why is everyone doing the trends? Make something original. I'm like, hmm. You're like, <laughs> go no reason you're, no, Yeah, exactly. Like I have a million original things. The only reason you're seeing this is because it's a trend. It's right. like movies right now. People are like, why is it all, why is it all IP? Why is it all like franchises? It's because the original movies come out and no one goes to see them. Well, speaking of movies and TV and, and music and some of the, the arts, uh, we we noticed your passion for indie rock shows and local breweries. You're having a beer now. I'm curious as to know what beer that is. Uh, so I'm checking out the, the Georgia beers now that I'm new here. Um, okay. And this is pontoon brewing. Okay. Would you say that these have a fusion sense into your feet, <laughs> into your your cooking and your recipe developing? Yeah, I've um, I've tried to make recipes and stuff based on shows or mm -hmm. movies or whatever else since since I started. And uh, you know that that's another thing that was like didn't really get any traction at the time. And now um, one of the biggest food bloggers of all time is because he always makes um, he always makes the stuff from TV. Uh, binging with with Babish, yeah. I, but my sensibilities for music and TV and stuff is like a little offbeat. So maybe mm -hmm. that's why it doesn't resonate as much because I'm doing a thing from like some obscure <laughs> show from 20 years ago or something, right? Well, speaking yeah. of pop culture, every time we do um, a tot recipe from, I'd say almost every time, I want to say every time, every time we do a tot recipe from your book. I know where you're going with okay. this. Yeah. We'll post it on our stories and we always put Napoleon Dynamite with it. Always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it. <laughs> and I of mean, course, you talk a lot that, about that in the Tots book too, which was an immediate appeal with the Tots book that you, yeah. you, you talked about that. And it's like, yeah. it is hard to think about Tots ever since that movie. And not think yeah. about Napoleon Dynamite. Exactly. not think about, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll just put out there that we and we've said this before that when we ask people to be on the podcast, we are fully ready for people to say no. Okay. <laughs> it's probably just yeah. like the imposter syndrome in us. Uh, but we were totally ready for you to say no. And we noticed probably maybe a year ago that you are friends on Instagram with Alvin Wayne. And so oh, we yeah, were going yeah. to use Alvin Wayne if you had said no, we were going to be like, okay, Alvin, do you know him? Know him? How can you connect? Us? <laughs> so I want to know how you know Alvin Wayne. And uh, now I want to know how you know Alvin <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> I'll tell you if you tell um, me first. <laughs> so my wife worked at Apartment Therapy for a while, uh, okay. so she met him through there, and okay. they've become really close um, and still are. And I cooked uh, a dinner party at his house and everything. So. Oh, oh my wow. gosh! You're lucky to have been in his apartment that we love. I know <laughs> it, it, it was a big. It was an honor for sure. Yeah. We went twice. Oh, oh, that well, would be like a dream. Okay, for her so I'm going to gonna tell yeah. you. First of all, he was our very first guest on our podcast, oh, wow. and I was fully ready for him to say no. But let me tell you a story about that, and then we're going to finally move on. Um, we... No, I I have time, so don't okay. worry about it. Although he's the okay. best, so we could talk about Alvin all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I ran up because of our our tiny living, small living stuff. He he came across. I think it was the apartment therapy piece that they had done, saying that he lives in this really small apartment and. So I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And he's he is great with engagement with, with his community. So I said oh, yeah. something about how I just really admired, you know, what he had done. And he started commenting. Okay, fast forward, uh, things open up in New York City right after COVID. And my mom and I were going to New York. And I don't know. I hadn't even had anything to drink, I don't think. I don't even know what inspired <laughs> me to do it. But I sent him, I sent him a message and I said, Hey, um, I'm coming to New York <laughs> with my mom. Is it, too, is it too forward to ask if I can come see your apartment? <laughs> wow. Okay. So he was like, no, we can do that. And I was like, what? That's crazy. So anyway, long story short, we had kind of worked it out. He ended up having a shoot in his apartment that day, again, from somebody, some other brand that he was working with. I can't remember. Um, so it's rescheduled. We haven't done it. But when he was on the show, I said, now, look, you should not make a habit of telling people, yes, that they can come to your apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but we did see it. We were totally gonna gonna ask him to talk to you if you had said no. So I'm glad that you said yes. <laughs> I think that anything that makes our life more joyous and positive, we call them a spark in our lives. So to to us, you are a spark in our lives. And so I would love if you could maybe give some advice for either aspiring food bloggers or recipe developers or someone who's listening to this and going, I think I have this idea, but I'm not sure people like it. It's kind of out of the box. Like, do you have any advice for people like that? Yeah. I mean, when, when people ask if they should start for me, um, I say, yes, like, don't wait until it's good. Don't wait until it's per perfect. Don't even wait until it's like, okay, just mm -hmm. start posting it. That's it. You can delete it later. Like I, when I started my website, I thought I was too late into blogging and that's 15 years ago. Wow. I thought all the good OG. blogs were established already. <laughs> and first blog post was, um, making pasta and I had pictures of, I had a tiny apartment in Bermuda and I had pictures of the pasta drying on my bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and like I was taking pictures with a cell phone camera, not like a smartphone camera yeah. from 2023. 20, it was 15 years ago, a cell phone camera. So okay. um I just say like you have to just you have to just go, you have to start it. And uh because you're not gonna be good necessarily for a year or two, um, even if you're like a natural, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the thing I say, just get yourself out there as much as you can. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. I, I like I, that advice. We, we similarly have some pretty, uh, I'd say pretty embarrassing blogs from the beginning, but we haven't deleted them. But I do sometimes think, gosh, I hope nobody goes back and looks at that stuff. because <laughs> but but It's fun to see your progress. It is. And, yeah. and the yeah. fun thing with blogs and podcasts, it's a really kind of a rogue thing you know it's like there's not a lot of rules you just kind of put yeah. it out there you know yeah that's what's fun yeah. about it well we have our fast five questions and this is just this or that it's just kind of get to know you a little bit better mm -hmm. you know but dogs or cats dogs but i do love cats okay yeah we're the same yeah we got a we got a big mix oh well, that's another story for another day but <laughs> yeah and number two Superpowers, invincibility or it, flying? Invisibility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Invi invincible. Yeah, I mean, I would, I'll take invincible. I like invincibility uh, better. <laughs> invincibility or, 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 or cowardly. Or, or poor self esteem. <laughs> no, it's a, okay. Invisibility or flying? That's hard, but I think I'm going to take flying because I don't want to fly in airplanes anymore. I'll just get there myself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. I agree with you mm -hmm. on that one too. Okay, number three, beach vacation or mountain getaway? Mountain. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I'm a New England, New England oh. guy. I like to, mm -hmm. I like to go to like a cool cabin and with my friends and just light a fire and make some dinner for everyone. Mm, okay. I do snowboard, but um, I haven't in a while. And the past few times I've gone to a mountain trip, I bring my snowboard and don't even take it out because I prefer <laughs> the uh, the apre ski better than that. Oh, the okay, okay. <laughs> For four, and I'm thinking this is music oriented, but I think I'm going to modify it a little bit to be a little more indie. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and then I'm drawing back, and I'm like, this might be a little too far back, but I'm going to go REM or the Replacements. <laughs> Um, that is a little far back, but I'll say the replacements. <laughs> okay. Okay. You like the replacements? Wait, what's the original question though? It was Beatles or Rolling Stones. And oh, so, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. My answer to that is Outcast. That's awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. I like, I do like the Beatles, but, um, there's been a funny internet debate rate leash recently that Outcast is better than the Beatles. <laughs> oh, I've not seen that. And so I... <laughs> I think it's very funny, but also they were my favorite band growing up and okay. being now in Atlanta and kind of like. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Did big boy, like have some businesses in Atlanta. I mean, I know he had his dog. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. But does he have a lot yeah. of businesses there? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about a lot, but there is. Okay. Some, uh, okay. We ask this of almost everyone, but we think it's so important for you is ketchup or mustard? <laughs> um, Mustard, mustard. Okay. I, I only like ketchup on French fries. I will not eat it in any other way on a burger, on a hot dog, anything. Okay. Oh, wow. I love it on French fries, yeah. but only French fries. 
Okay. Yeah, hot dogs are not made for for ketchup. You know. <laughs> Strictly mustard. That's right. Okay. Well, the question that we do ask everyone, and we would love to know your answer, is Dan. What does a life well lived mean to you? I I was thinking about this a lot because you mentioned that you you asked this, and um, I I just feel like the moving from city to city and being with my my wife and my dog has just been like such a wonderful experience we just try to um like you we try to follow the adventures and uh live in an exciting unique way and being here uh for only two months so far we've already made some friends we've put ourselves out there and like gone to some really cool um events and it's hard to like put words, I think, to what mm -hmm. li living a full life is. Yeah. But to me, just like the time we've spent here already in the past few months, um, not only did we just move here, but we also took a trip to Toronto with our friends from Columbus, Ohio and saw Beyonce there. Wow. Like, I mean, you can't, it, and that was in, within the two months of, of moving here. And we also had a trip to Seattle for work, but we saw a bunch of people we knew. Uh -huh. um, and had to go back to Boston for for something as well. And you don't want to overdo it. Obviously, it's a lot, but um, it, but it just feels like it's been really full for sure. Uh -huh. That's great, Dan. I think if Shannon got to go see Beyonce, she would never leave the house again after that. <laughs> it would just. It would be that's life fulfilled, right? I'd say, I'd say that's it's a life not too fulfilled. late. It's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> the tour just started. That's true. Well, you want to you want to say where you're tell them who you're seeing this weekend? This weekend, and and I'll tell you, my fear is as I'm getting a little bit older, um, I have pit tickets, and I'm a little nervous about it. Is Post Malone? Oh wow, wow, that's <laughs> it's Let's also probably a huge place too. Yeah, to actually, his pit. summer yeah. tour is like in um, amphitheaters. So it's not as huge as like a stadium or anything, but um, I'm nervous for a couple reasons. Number one, I I know it's going to be super hot because here it's yeah. in the 90s and um, it's going to be super hot that day. And we're going to be out, you know, an outside amphitheater in the pit. Uh, number two is I tend to get a little <laughs> temperamental when I get hot. And <laughs> and if a lot of people are around me and they're trying to get in front of me and all that, I, I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be a thing. But <laughs> I'm going to try to enjoy it. My sister and I are going. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a deaf, we're, we're, Jerry is a fan, we, fan boy. I'm a fan girl. I'm definitely a fan girl about the things I love. Um, and so that's why when you came on, we were like, we are a fan boy and fan girl of you. We're so excited and you are so inspirational and your books just bring so much happiness to us. And so we're just so thankful that you took the time and thankful that you put this content out there because it's wonderful. Yeah, this is really oh, neat. I can books. We have the. <laughs> We have a whole little section of them. <laughs> That's pretty neat. This yeah, is a landmark event for our is, podcast. It is. It is. <laughs> We're just so appreciative. We do really appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll I'm, I'm appreciative. It's been really great. If you could please tell our audience, and we're going to link all this stuff down in the show notes, where they can find you, how can they can access your books, all things Dan Whalen. Yeah, all my books are in most places that you can buy books, but obviously Amazon is... Uh, easiest and best way and um i'm on most social media as at tfimb which is the initials of the food of my beard and right now i'm doing a summer series called buns out where i am trying to stretch the limits of what can be a bun for a burger and it's been really fun <laughs> <laughs> yes we have a lot of a plethora of tomatoes in our garden this year and the one thing i thought about for us maybe trying jr with our beyond burger is when you had the panko on the um, panko crumbs on the tomato um, slice or something. Oh, okay. I was like, that's such a great idea. We could kind of make that a bun and see, <laughs> see if that, <laughs> see if that works for us. <laughs> so yeah, thank mm -hmm. you for making us more adventurous. Just appreciate you. Thank you so much. Wow. Well, was, was Dan pleasant or what? Um, I mean, you know, like we said in the podcast, Dan has been a part of our lives, whether he knows it or not, <laughs> since 2018. And our toaster oven, most of the cooking that goes on in our toaster oven is thanks to Dan Whalen. I would, I, I think, because when we got the the tots, when the tots cookbook came in, it was uh, 
we thought it was tailor made for our toaster oven. Like every, <laughs> everything about it was like, yeah, let's um, well, I'm, there's a lot to, to go into there. We had just moved into a tiny place and we were <laughs> doing things small and we were toaster and, ovens and, and uh, we sure didn't buy new things. So in yeah. order for us to be convinced to buy something new, it had to be a pretty big deal. Yeah. And we bought the tots book and wow, what an adventure that has been. But I hold in my hand right here, the nachos for dinner, which I had in my hand during the, during the recording. If you go to our YouTube channel, you will see the actual visual podcast, but I'm telling you, like right now tonight, I'm like, we have some Beyond Burger in there. I kind of want to make it into some nachos. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking these Caprese nachos would be really nice with a little balsamic, maybe. Um, mozzarella cheese. I mean, the tomatoes from our garden. What does not sound wonderful about that? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Right. And I know when you get into your NPR voice <laughs> that you mean business. And I, I think we do. Caprese, not, caprese nachos. I mean, crazy nights. Crazy nights. But we really encourage you go to the show notes, check out um, our links to other, like we have some, some where we have recreated his recipes. And you heard him say that, you know, sometimes he even uses the plant based meats. And we really love his his food. We love the creations he comes up with. He is a fun, fun, uh, content view on Instagram. So be sure you check out his Instagram and, um, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. And you know, it's like when you meet someone visually, I mean, virtually who you've been a fan of, who, you know, could really be a jackass, but he was wonderful. Oh, oh, definitely. You know, he's one of, one of the more pleasant people I've, I've met in a while. And that that's neat. It, with what we do to have that opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, be, you don't want the, like the time that, uh, Bob Dylan met Woody Guthrie and he, he was his idol and it, he just, he thought he was kind of a jerk, you know? Mm. So yeah, that's a little bit of music history for you. Or how you remember the time that, uh, well, we didn't really meet Billy Corgan for Smashing Pumpkins, but I think I've disappointed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he was, <laughs> When you're when you're standing on a uh, fire escape on the back of a building in an alleyway smoking a cigarette with a long, long black coat on, you kind of think you're having a private moment. And you're not when Shannon Arner's around. No. <laughs> no, you're not. No, well, you're not. there you have it, guys. Another that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> another, another podcast, another adventure that we'll tell you about some other time. If this episode resonated with you, or if you know of someone who would benefit from anything we talked about today, or any episode, our guests, or anything, please share it with a friend. It's a great way of supporting the podcast and us, and we really appreciate it. Another way of supporting the pod is by leaving us a five-star reviewer rating on the platform you're listening to us on. Oh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that also supports us. We would love that. You can always find us, links we refer to during the show, and any of the podcast sponsors at arnardventures.com or linked here in these show notes. And until next time, enjoy that journey you're on. We're wishing you lots of adventures. Adios. Arrivederci. Au revoir. Adios. Uh, sayonara. Alvida uh, Dos vidiniana. And uh, 